And it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had been in the land of Bountiful for the space of many days, the voice of the Lord came unto me. Arise, and get thee into the mountain. And I arose, and went up into the mountain, and cried unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto me, Nephi, thou shalt construct a ship after the manner which I shall show thee, that I may carry thy people across these waters. Good at this. I'm not a missionary. Do you trust the Lord? Oh, sure, but I, I'm no good at this. I, I wouldn't even know where to start. Susan, someone has to do the Lord's there work. There is not a thing on earth like seeing the gospel change someone's life. I know it's hard, Susan, but the Lord never said it'd be easy. But how? And who? Think of everyone you know, and write down the names of anybody who comes to your mind. It could be anybody, and then pray about it. If you're sincere, I promise you. The Lord will let you know who and when the time is right. Lord, whither shall I go that I may find ore to molten, that I may make tools to construct the ship after the manner which thou hast shown unto me? And it came to pass that the Lord told me whither I should go to find ore that I might make tools, and I, Nephi, did make bellows wherewith to blow the fire of the skins of beasts, and I did make tools of the ore. There's no way I would ever know girl I know. Wasn't even on my list. Come on, sis. You never know how she'll respond to you. Right. I'm not even in her league. She doesn't know I exist. Tell me again how you felt when you saw her this morning. I don't know. Incredible feeling. Kind of warmth. Kind of excitement. A little scared. I knew she was the one. But why her? Look. If the spirit prompts you to do something, maybe you ought to do it. Stay calm. Just say, Linda. Linda. Linda, we've missed you. Linda, I've been, I've been thinking how great it would be if you would consider. Thank you, Jer. Linda, it would mean so much to me if you would join me at a Laurel activity. Do it. Just do it. Just be positive. Just, just say, Linda, I'd like for you to go to a Laurel activity with me. Yeah, that's it. Positive. Linda? Hi. How are you doing? Fine. Good. Hi, you ready to go? Uh, yeah. Um, see ya. Um, um, I had a, I had a question to ask you really quick. Um, I was wondering if you'd like to come with me to a Laurel activity with me. What's a Laurel activity? Um, Sarah, right? Susan. Susan, right. Um, I really don't think that I would be that interested. I mean, I've been out before, and I just don't think that it would work out. 
I'm sure you understand. I, I didn't think you'd be interested. Oh. I just didn't know, so I thought I'd ask. Yeah. Well, thanks for asking. Sure. OK, bye. Our brother is a fool. <laughs> or he thinks that he can build a ship. <laughs> and he thinks that he can cross these great waters. <laughs> Are you nuts? She hasn't been to church since who knows when. Did I just hear what I thought I heard? Mm -hmm. uh, let us say that she would never be caught dead being seen with us. Susan, what can you possibly have to say to Linda to make her want to give you the time of day, let alone change her life? I mean, in her mind, she has it all. Don't you think you're in just a little over your head? I'd say dead and buried. <laughs> Maybe they're right. I didn't even come close to getting through a door. Why didn't it work? What about that feeling I had? Is this what it's like on a mission? <laughs> no, no. Missions are easy. Just be patient. It takes time for the Lord to soften some people's hearts. I don't know about all this. This may sound real simple. But the Lord will prepare the way. Trust him. I, Nephi, said unto them that they should murmur no more against their father, neither should they withhold their labor from me. For God had commanded me that I should build a ship and I said unto them, if God had commanded me to do all things, I could do them. If he should command me that I should say unto this water, be thou earth, it should be earth. And if I should say it, it would be done. And now if the Lord has such great power and has wrought so many miracles among the children of men. How is it that he cannot instruct me that I should build a ship? And now, if the Lord has such great power, how is it that he cannot instruct me? Are you on some kind of an assignment or something? Am I your project? No. no. Then why are you doing this? Did somebody put you up to it? No. I don't understand. Susan, look. I like my life the way it is, all right? I mean, I'm OK. You don't have to worry about me. Well, I'll it's be not fine. Like I'm worried about you.
book hasn't been checked out. You sure it's not there? Positive. Well, it's probably been misshelved. I'm sorry. Do you have any suggestions on where I could find it? Have you tried the library on Liberty Street? Come on, I've got to go. I've got to go, too. Well, what am I going to do? We, we were supposed to work on this together. I'm not the only one that's got finals. But we planned this. Really? Wait a minute. I'll flunk Mr. Corby's class unless I get this. You know I'm no good at writing term papers. You'll be fine. I really need your help. Linda, you'll be fine. I'm sorry. I'll do okay. <sighs> Linda? Chemistry's my best subject. Susan. Can I help? I... I don't know. Well, you need help, don't you? Um, looks like you have reports of your own to do. Yeah, but, um, maybe I can get you started. You know, you don't have to do this. I know. You don't mind? No. You were right. I was? About what? I had no idea that would happen. Well, I think the Lord did. next part is really important. In verse 19, King Benjamin goes on. For the natural man is an enemy to God and has been from the fall of Adam. What all of us must realize is that when we sin in our fallen state, it makes us unworthy to be in the presence of God. Anyone who's in a state of sin and rebellion against God remains in their fallen state. So, to the extent that we continue in our sins and are unrepentant, we become enemies to God. Hi, Bishop. Hi, Susan. Hi, Excuse me. Say, Linda, uh, could I get you to stop by my office for just a moment, please? Sure. I'll, I'll be right there. Thanks. It's been good to see you at church these last few weeks. Everything okay? We've got to talk. All right, now? Sure. Hmm? Can you drop us off on the way home? Sure. Thanks. Look, Susan. I've been coming out to church. Right. I mean, I've been trying, right? Right, you have. Well, my life is... I don't know. My friends think I'm weird. My parents are zero support. I thought when I started back to church that things would get better, but they haven't. And now the bishop wants me to be Laurel's secretary. And then I'm told I'm an enemy to God. The talk in sacrament meeting. I don't think that's what it means. That's what he said. It was completely frustrating. I knew what I wanted to say, but I didn't know how to explain it. She didn't really give me a chance to anyway. I think I'm losing her. Okay. 
What does the term natural man mean to you? It's when we sin. Right. When we sin, we separate ourselves from God. It's like a barrier. And we create our own fallen state. So we're not, we're not talking about Adam's fall. No. See, when we sin, it's our fall. Ours. But I don't feel like a fallen person. Well, that's because you're already allowing the Lord to change you. So that's where the atonement comes in. Right. See, the scriptures call the change from our fallen, sinful nature a mighty change of heart. And it says that only the Lord can make that change, but only you can invite him to make it. Invite him. Yeah. See, as you yield to the enticings of the Spirit, a change of heart can come that replaces the desire to sin with the desire to follow Christ. Why couldn't I have said it like that? <laughs> All I'm saying is that when you turn to Christ in faith and humility and yield to the enticings of the Spirit, the Lord can soften and change your heart. But I don't feel like I've had a mighty change of heart. Well, sure you have, more than you realize. But for somebody like you who's been trying to live the gospel your whole life, the change happens over a period of time. You just haven't recognized it. Think of it as a, as a process, not one single event. OK, well, I guess I have changed more than I thought. But what does this have to do with Linda? Well, that's just it. See, Linda has to go through the same changes that we all go through. She started to put off the natural man. She just needs to continue and yield to the enticings of the spirit. So don't give up on her, just help her. When you yield to the enticings of the spirit, a change of heart can come, and that replaces the desire to sin with the desire to follow Christ. For the natural man is an enemy to God and has been from the fall of Adam and will be forever and ever unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit and putteth off the natural man and becometh a saint through the atonement of Christ the Lord. And becometh us a child, submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to submit to all things which the Lord seeth fit to inflict upon him. Even as a child doth submit to his father. Linda, what do you remember about your baptism? I don't remember much. I didn't understand it. But I do remember feeling something special. I knew I was doing something right. I felt clean. But then something happened. It didn't last. Somehow, I lost it. But you're feeling some things now. Stay with it. And the Lord said unto me, Marvel not that all mankind must be born again. Yea, born of God, changed from their carnal and fallen state to a state of righteousness. 
being redeemed of God, becoming his sons and daughters. Those are powerful words, aren't they? Yeah. But I still don't understand why I need to become a, a little child. That's exactly what I don't want to be. Well, it doesn't mean to be childish or to be treated as though you were too young to make decisions for yourself. It means to be childlike. Now, there's a big difference. It means submitting to the Lord as a child would submit to his parent, as the Savior submitted to his father. I don't think I can. After the things I've done, he wouldn't want me as one of his children. What do you see out of this window? Tell me, what, what do you see? A tree, parking lot, some cars. We look out this window and we see the same thing. Now, I want you to look at something else and keep looking at it until we both see the same thing, okay? I want you to look at this picture of the Savior. Now, if I understand you correctly, you see someone that is so good that he wouldn't want you to be one of his daughters. But I want you to see the person that I know. I see someone who is so good and so full of mercy and wants you to be one of his daughters so much that he was willing to suffer and die so that you could repent and be forgiven of what you've done wrong. Can you see that person? Thanks. Thank you. It's good to talk to you. Hi, Susan. Hi, Bishop.